Hello, welcome to Computer Tech and More. I've got a great video to, for you today. We're going to be taking a look at the newest iteration of the Tough Fan 12. It is now time to go pro. Let's get right into it. So first, a little bit of spec information. It's a standard 120 millimeter class fan, 25 millimeters thick. Uh, amperage is 0 0.19, 500 to 2000 RPM range, 22.6 decibels, uh, 70.8 CFM. 3.19 millimeters of H2O hydraulic bearing generation 2 with a five year warranty. And I have a couple pictures of the Pro versus the original. The Pro here is the one over here with the rounded edges. So you can see they've got very subtle differences. Looks like the gap between the two fan blades is much narrower on the newer design. The hub inner diameter looks to be near on identical. The blade shape has been changed a little bit, as well as the front curvature. Overall, a number of small tweaks to it that really look like it's just enhanced the performance of this fan, as well as changing the overall visual aesthetic at the front end of the fan. A little bit of a side shot, so you can see how the gaps have changed ever so slightly, as well as how the fan profile leads up to the edge of the fan. Little nuances and tweaks in terms of edge distance, how close the blades get to the uh, fan hub, drastically improve and affect the performance of the fan, as well as small changes like getting rid of the sharp tip, change the noise profile of the fan to help make it quieter, at least in theory. And here is the back, so reducing the number of internal struts. It just has less interference for the fans to cross. So every time a fan blade crosses over one of these struts, it's an opportunity for the fan to generate more noise. So fewer struts, less noise. Again, small tweaks that fan ta thermal take has improved with this fan. Now on to the actual graphs. First is my case simulation test. So this is distance from the fan. The horizontal axis is distance. The vertical axis is airspeed. And this is what it's going to be for the next little bit. I did measurements at several key locations, the 6, the 9, the 11, and 14.5 inch marks. These are representative of several size cases. The 6 inch mark is representative of a short throw distance, like blowing air from the bottom of your case up into your GPU, or in an upside down case, vice versa. And it's represented by a case of length being able to fit only 120 millimeter class fan inside uh, the length of the case. Then we have the 9 inch mark. This would still be able to fit a full uh, ATX motherboard, but without any additional length. Think of being it being able to only hold 220 millimeter class fans in terms of its length. Then we have the 11 inch mark. This would be your standard mid towers. Uh, it would be able to hold 320 millimeter class fans, so a standard 360 AIO would fit in this size case, as well as a uh, 280 class uh, AAO. And then we have the truly large cases at the 14.5 inch mark. This would be able to hold 340 millimeter class fans and be represented by a case like the Fract Design Torrent. Now, how does it compare against my control fan? The control fan is three parts A12 wing strive to 1.814. This mash of uh, two fans I consider relatively good as a general baseline. So, fans that uh, deviate from it in above it. So higher airspeed, so vertical axis airspeed, the better I consider that fan. The more it deviates below that line, the worse I consider that fan. And uh, the horizontal axis is still distance from the front of the case or that front fan. So the Tough Fan 12 Pro is actually looking really bad here in this noise normalized value. The Tough Fan 12 Turbo here in orange and the original Tough Fan 12 appear to do better than this fan in this particular test. That is a very interesting result. What about 100%? Well, the Tough Fan 12 Pro is still underperforming compared to those fans. It has a similar RPM to the original Tough Fan 12, but is quite a bit noisier. And the Tough Fan 12 Turbo is just doing a bit better, particularly at the 6 inch mark. By the time you get to a bigger case, it's a mishmash mashup, and mm, ironically, the regular 12 somehow does better. How do these fans compare against other fans I've tested? 
Well, we only are gonna take a look at the Tough N12 Pro because that is the basis for this video. It starts off actually doing, at the bottom end of doing okay, but it drops off too steeply. So I'm gonna say, uh, thermal take, you need to work on how the fan focuses its air. It diffuses it way too much. How about at 100%? Still spreading the air out too much. It's not a very good at directing the air where you need it to go. So as a case fan, it's looking like it's a no-go. Uh, nine inch mark, case airspeed versus decibel reading. So vertical axis is airspeed, horizontal axis is decibel reading. Decibel rating. Uh, I do apologize, these aren't labeled. Uh, newer videos that I'm recording and creating now will have labels. Um, so the 12 Pro, you can see that it's underperforming compared to these other fans. So once again, I would say not looking like a good case fan. All right, now we're on to airspeed through my CPU air cooler, the Noctua U12A. It is a fairly thick and high fin density air cooler. So once again, we have the control fan. The left graft here is vertical meters per second airspeed. Horizontal is RPM. The right graph is airspeed vertical and decibel rating horizontal. So we got the Tough Fan 12 Pro outperforming all the other fans so that geometry changes that we talked about earlier really have improved how well this fan performs in terms of its blade design, its efficiency per RPM compared to the original Tough Fan 12s. How about noise profile? Because that's really going to be what's more important. Well, if we take a look, particularly at lower RPMs, it is significantly quieter for more, more air flow. But as the RPM uh, goes up, 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 we do see that it becomes a bit noisier. But what's really interesting is that it matches the airspeed of the Tough Fan 12 Turbo um, while operating at a lower RPM to the Turbo. So the, they optimize this geometry for pressure. How does it compare against other fans I've tested? Noise normalized results. Well, we have the Unifan P28 right at the very tippy top. And we have the Tough Fan 12 Pro, not quite right behind it. It's actually a pretty significant difference between the two fans. But the Pro, it's doing really well. And then the Tough 12 Turbo isn't far behind it, also doing really quite well. So these fans are shaping up to be good high-end performers for your air coolers or even radiators potentially. How about at 100%? This is where it will fall back. It just doesn't have the same sort of RPM as several other fans, but it is still outperforming the Tough Fan 12 Turbo, which is sitting right here at 2.2 meters per second, while the Tough Fan 12 Pro is at 2.3. I do have an estimated wattage for my particular CPU, which is the 11700K, on this particular air cooler. Every cooler is different, every CPU is slightly different, so these wattages you can't take verbatim, but if you're using the same cooler as me and the same CPU, it's probably close enough. These values are accurate. Uh, the wattages are accurate within plus or minus about five watts, or maybe two and a half watts, so in each direction, so five watts total. So, you know, pretty good accuracy for this test. And as this channel grows, I'd like to actually add real thermal testing to this rather than that estimated value. But overall, you do need to take into account how much performance do you actually need from your fan? Because you could look right there at the tippy top, get the T30 and go, yes, I'm going for absolute balls to the walls, highest clock speeds or lowest temperatures, but you're gonna be paying for it in a lot of noise. So you do need to look at where you want to optimize your cooling performance, noise values, and that sort of rigmarole, which is what I'm trying to address with this video and taking a look at this data. So how does it actually do when compared to other fans in terms of vertical axis 
is air speed meters per second horizontal axis is in decimals and it's sitting right towards the top it's not the best but it's right up up there and I would actually give it a recommendation as a cooler fan well particularly air cooler because that's what I was able to test but it should still do pretty well on probably a radiator and my last test is CFM testing. It's my least favorite test. Basically, it is a scientific test. It tells you the volume of air this fan is able to move, but tells you nothing else. Being able to tell you volume, uh, particularly without restriction, doesn't tell you anything about how well a fan is going to operate inside of a computer case because you care about how well the fan can direct the air through the computer case. And open airflow is irrelevant for how well the fan will perform through a cooler so i don't really like this test but everybody does it so i i did the test um it lines up perfectly with my control fan so it overall is good and it starts off better than my control fan and then gets worse as we get higher and higher air speeds higher and higher rpms how does it compare against other fans i've tested well here it's pretty much in the middle of the pack well, before it was towards the top, so uh, right in line with other fans that are pretty much similar RPMs. So you got the Ventra Pro, the General Typhoon. It's a not a bad place for it to be. How about at 100 percent, 2,000 RPM? It is sitting right around most other 2,000 RPM fans. Uh, we got the Tough Fan 12 sitting a little bit below it. Overall, it's underperforming in this test, so. Um, there's that. And uh, airspeed or CFM versus decibel rating at as it increases, it's not as good as other fans. It's actually a little bit on the low side. So it just does not perform well in this particular test. Like it did, didn't perform very well in the uh, open air test. And last but not least is the value proposition. So this is between $25 and $28 uh, from where I could find it on Amazon in the United States. Uh, value proposition is performance per dollar. So depending on where your currency is and what the value is between these fans, there may be shakeups. But I'm basing it all off of the US dollar. But it's very easy to calculate on your own. You just take the performance value that I had and you divide it by your currency. Uh, so the Tough Fan 12 Pro is pretty mundane. It's below average. It's not that great. At the sixes mark, it's pretty bad. No surprise, it didn't do particularly well in this case test. We're going to keep things moving. Again, not very well at the 11 inch mark. Let's keep moving. In the CFM test, it's right in line with about average. Again, it didn't do particularly well in the test. So that's why it's kind of average, despite its kind of high price tag even at 100%, a bit below average. How about at the cooler testing? Well, I would say it's slightly just by a hair above average uh, in terms of value proposition. At 100%, it's a little bit below. These fans are not every fan I've tested. It's not a complete representation. I kind of selected them at random, but I would say that it's just a little bit too expensive for the performance you're getting and I have gotten reports that uh, thermal takes fans uh, don't have particularly high reliability I am not able to test that I can only go off information that is online I will say that I do have tough fan a tough fan 14 pros in my PC right now in the bottom of the case they've been in there for three months without any problems and as things shake up I will report on it uh, that is why in the future I'd like to add longevity testing. Uh, this is my raw data. This data does belong to me. It takes about one and a half to two hours for me to generate this level of detail. So if you would like to use it, you are more than welcome to, as long as it's just for you. Or if you want to make your own graphs, whatever, that is perfectly perfectly reasonable. If you want to use any sort of video, publication, written, or journal, I do ask the reference me and my channel. That includes making your own graphs to pu publish online. You I would ask that you reference saying I got this data from Computer Tech and More. I greatly appreciate it. If you're looking at ways to support this channel, I have a Patreon page or join me as a YouTube member. 
every penny that goes into my future testing. I want to build a noise chamber. I need a test system. I want a better microphone. Just a bunch of little things that add up. And as I don't have any sponsors, that is the best way to support this channel. Um, I do understand that money does not grow on trees and I need to prove myself as a great channel. So I'm going to continue working on things. If you got suggestions on ways for me to improve my videos, please leave in the comment sections down below. I do read through it and I do try to continually improve my videos. If you've got particular fans you'd like me to take a look at, please leave that down there as well. I do have a Discord page if you want to discuss fans, discuss computer cases, builds, ideas, whatever. I do want to get into uh, case testing, radiator testing, um, heatsink testing, AIOs. I don't really plan on doing CPUs and GPUs. There's enough other people doing that, but I'd like to do the cooling hardware as well as like cooling pads for laptops and get into laptop testing. But uh, that's just where I'd like to go with this channel. It's a long way off, if, and it's viewers like you that will help can make this channel continue to grow. Anyways, thank you very much for watching Computer Tech and More. I hope you have a great day, and I hope to see you next time.